Hi everybody, this is Justin Doman with Elite Audio Video in Smart Homes of Texas. Uh, kind of doing a walkthrough video today of what I have in my personal rack, how I wire things, um, and what you can expect from a company like myself or a reputable installer. Uh, so today we're in my theater. My theater has 140 inch screen innovations, slate acoustically transparent screen. I actually have five sets of LCR speakers installed behind the screen. You can see down low, um, I've got input jumpers that allows me to switch between all the different speakers that are located up top. So going back to the rack, I've got a strong signature series rack. It's a very well built piece of steel. Uh, holds all my equipment nicely um, and gives me plenty of places for wire management. Um, I've got three Marantz pieces up here at the top. Uh, the top one is my preamplifier. Uh, this runs all of my surround sound, tells everything what to do. Uh, my devices plug into it and then it feeds it out to our amplifiers down below. So in this room, I have Dolby Atmos. 7.4.4 uh, currently installed. Um, all my surround speakers are kept very nice. Um, so we got my five channel amp here, my seven channel amp here, pulling hot air off of everything. I've got AC infinity fans. Uh, if you don't ventilate your equipment, it will break. It will not run as efficiently. So if you want to keep everything working well for a long time, I highly suggest these things. They are not expensive for what you're paying for high dollar AV gear. Uh, right below my Morantz amplifiers, I've got a Behringer iNuke 3000 DSP. Uh, that is not a regular piece of equipment. It's a commercial amp. It's designed to run my subwoofers. Uh, I custom build my subwoofers so they're not a normal box unit that you see uh, at the stores. Um, I like a little bit more bass. I like a little bit more clarity. So I custom build everything going back to my car audio days. Going down the list a little bit more, I've got another AC Infinity fan. Um, this is pulling all the hot air off of that subwoofer amp as well as my house audio amplifiers. Um, these two triad pieces, this is what runs all of my house audio. I've got eight zones of distributed audio that can play different things in each room, all at different volumes. Just below that, I have a Control 4 EA3 processor. This is the CPU brain of the entire system. It tells everything what to do, how to do it, when to do it, um, as well as processes all my music to send to uh, the amplifiers. I've got my two direct TV boxes. That way I can have two different things playing at once in my entire house. Uh, we don't ever really use the second one, but we have two... Uh, in case we ever wanted it. Uh, we're a huge streaming family. Um, I've got a Roku Ultra right there. Um, it's 4K HDR, works really nicely. Um, we use it a lot for Voodoo movies, Netflix, uh, all of our streaming needs. Um, as you see, I got a fan right on top of that. I like to get all the hot air right up and off and uh, get it away. Got my son's Nintendo Switch, allows us to play Mario Kart on the 140 inch screen or downstairs in the living room, um, as our Marantz processor is a dual zone. Uh, normally in a rack like this, I would have video distribution um, for the house. I actually left a spot for it. Um, I just haven't needed it in my own personal home yet, as we only have uh, two TVs that we actually use uh, in this house. So going down, we have our camera in VR. It's a network video recorder. This is what all the cameras uh, around my house plug into. I've got eight total. Um, it allows me to view them on the big screen. It lets me view them on an app anywhere I want to. Just below that, we've got what's called an watt box with OVRC enabled. What this allows me to do is power cycle any piece of gear in my equipment without having to actually go behind it and physically unplug it. So I could be uh, 
somewhere halfway across the world, my system would tell me, hey, your Roku stopped responding. I could simply pull up my application, click reboot Roku, it would turn it off, turn it back on. It's, uh, it's really a game changer for the service industry and uh, how us AV integrators have went about doing things. Going down below, um, I've got an older Oppo Blu-ray player. Uh, that's going to be swapped out here hopefully soon. Um, I was kind of waiting for a new 4K projector before I did that, but um, I think I'm going to pull that trigger here sooner rather than later. Uh, going down, we have our networking gear. Um, we have a 8-port PoE switch uh, that runs my Ring Elite doorbell um, as well as the access points around the house. Um, below that, I also have a 24-port Arachnus switch and a Luxol Epic 5 ABR 5000. I do have Gigabyte Internet here, so I needed something with enough throughput to be able to actually process that much speed and uh, get it out to all my devices. Uh, down below, I've got an OVRC hub. This is the device that talks to all the gear inside this rack and lets me know on a regular basis how it's responding, what it's doing, uh, are there updates available. Um, so in, from my interface I can see all that update gear and keep everything where it needs to be. Uh, then down below that I just got my basic AT&T modem router um, as well as a little access point on top of that to feed the media room. A lot of people disagree with amps on top. Um, I'll tell you right now in this rack I'm six foot four, 270 pounds. I can pull on this thing as hard as I want and it will not physically come over. I've tried. People tell me it's a safety concern. I promise you it is not. Coming around to the back side here, uh, we have where all the cables enter. Um, I like to do multiple gang boxes. It lets me quickly know what each wire run is. So in case I ever need to add cables, um, I can add it to that run, or if I need to troubleshoot anything, it's easy for me to follow along. So, entering into the rack, we have all of our HDMI cable, we've got all our speaker cables, uh, amplifiers, all my connections are made with Planet Waves, uh, custom RCA tips, and then all of my speaker connections our Planet Waves Banana Club plugs. It allows everything to stay very nicely and neat. And if I ever need to quickly unplug something, I simply just unplug it. And then I can plug it back in without having to mess with terminals. On the side here, we've got a very large power strip. Uh, this is for the gear inside the rack that doesn't need to be rebooted. Um, I never need to reboot my amplifiers, I never need to reboot uh, fans, stuff like that. So I just plug them in over to the side, I buy shorter power cords. That way everything wire manages a little bit nicer. Going to get really tight in here to see. See if we got a better angle. I don't. Um, as you can see here, I try to service loop as much as I can. Um, try to be able to allow for future expandability. Um, also you can see all my wires here are all completely cable combed. I like everything to be straight, nice, neat, tidy. Uh, you look at a lot of racks and they get crazy quick with uh, things just going everywhere. Coming down a little left further, as you can see more of the service loops, feeding all the gear. Uh, everything's nicely managed, zip ties are put onto everything. A lot of people disagree with that, but I make sure not to apply mine too tight. Um, so I can just go through and quickly cut things if I need to. Uh, going down a little bit further, we have our network of uh, NVR for our cameras. We've got all of our plugs for the devices and the gear into the OVRC brain. Um, and then we have our network switches down below. If you have any questions on how a system like this works, uh, as always, you can message me, email me, uh, you can text me. My website is EliteAVI.com. Uh, my phone number is 469-644-1675. I try to help uh, anybody that I can uh, with any questions they may have. So thank you for watching my video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more high-end audio video projects. Thank you.